All right, peace family. We are now live. Welcome back, Black Magic 363 family. I'm your host, Brother Rich, and I'm with a living legend. I mean, this brother is one of the best. Uh, King Simon put me on to this brother, Lloyd Strayhorn. Welcome back to the show, my brother. You. How you doing, brother Rich? <laughs> yeah, good. Man, I'm good. I'm good, brother. Good to have you back on here, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a minute, but you know, everything happens when it's due. How's the family? Everybody's good. Everybody's good. Um, I was talking to you off uh, off the on the phone the other day about me making a transition to Georgia. So uh, you know, that's the latest thing in my personal life transition. I might be coming that way based upon all this craziness yeah. going up here in this city. These these people up here in New York don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, New York is on a whole nother level right now, family. It's on some old other issues. Yeah, right I don't now. know what, what Kool-Aid they be drinking, but it ain't the Kool-Aid we drink. That's for sure. For real. Let me uh let's get to a few commercials, family, and we will be right back. All right, family? All right. Where's this thing at? Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself. It's only a dream, and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest, too. Check it out. My pet, Petey, was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. Hey, family, this is King Simon. Don't forget about getting your new motivation session at 347-496-1022. And don't forget about the Cosmic Alignment Workshop on May the 15th. Go to zenbar.org. That's zenbar.org. Also, family, my brother Wayne Chandler got the workshop coming up May 21st, 2022 from 1 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. You can purchase the ticket at waynechandler.eventbrite.com. This is going to be absolutely amazing. We are going into the age of discipline. We are in the age of information, but it's time to apply this into a discipline. And it's time to learn who we are, family. So make sure you all sign up for that workshop right there, family. Shout out to everybody that's in the room so far. Also, I um, also want to give a special shout out. I just did a show yesterday with the brother Rod Hayes. Shout out the brother Rod Hayes. We had a magnificent show yesterday and the brother will be on Patreon tomorrow. And um, I tell you, I got a lot of advanced metaphysical shows on Patreon. So shout out to everybody that's on Patreon. Uh, we getting it popping on Patreon now. Um, his show, uh, like I'm giving everybody a name for the shows that, um, that, that you know, that they are coming on the platform with. His show is called We Are Mutants. So we all know at this point that we are more than what they call human beings. And it's time for us to activate a lot of these dormant genes and a lot of these dormant abilities within us. So the first episode of our of, of my show that I'm doing with the brother Rod Hayes is going to be called How to Activate So-Called Junk DNA. And that will be live tomorrow at 9 p.m. exclusively on Patreon family. All right. Shout out to everybody that's on that platform. Lloyd Strayhorn, man, we're going to have a good show tonight. We're going to talk about something extremely important, man. I remember when I was young, hearing about all the older, older folks running the numbers, the number games. That's all I used to hear about when I was young, the numbers game. Yep. And it's like when, when the system came out with the lottery, the, the lottery, it's like the numbers game disappeared. So I need, I need a thorough history lesson because the, the lotto is big. Billion dollar industry, and they saying that a black man and created the numbers game, and well, his name that is true. That is true, and in fact, uh, I wrote a I wrote a masterpiece in this book here called uh, Forever mm -hmm. Harlem, and it was it. talking about the numbers. Let me see that again. Show that again. Show that again. This is the book right here, mm -hmm. the numbers game in Harlem. Okay, and it talked about how the numbers was actually started out of Harlem. And in fact, that picture there that you see, I think is, um, I think Wikipedia or something like that. But mm -hmm. I found another picture of him that, in fact, when we were putting this book together, <clears throat> the publishers wanted to make a very small picture of Casper Holstein. Well, this is a picture I got of Casper Holstein. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was uh, from Saint Croix. Mm -hmm. he was born on. Uh, he was born on uh, December the uh, 7th of uh, 1876, okay? Mm -hmm. He came to Harlem as a young boy. And what happens is he worked on Wall Street. I like how they say put on Wall Street. Like, but the guy, Casper Holstein, was simply a janitor, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, cleaning, mopping floors. Because don't forget, uh, at that time, you could have a college degree, but they would be brothers 
operating the elevators going up and down because we wasn't given that much credit. But it was mm. in those moments, in those quiet moments that I'm working on Wall Street, that he came up upon the concept of developing this number system. The mm. number system was just three numbers. Now they got three and four numbers, but it was three numbers. And the, the odds was you would get eight for every one dollar, you would get eight. But at that time, he developed it whereby you get paid. People were just paying for pennies, nickels, and dimes. You can't even go to the lottery now. The, the most you can do is pay 50 cents. But still, they don't have as many, but they used to have number holes, as they call them. Mm -hmm. They used to have runners, whatnot, and stuff like that. But what happens is he created the number game where it kept thousands of people employed. Mm. It was the poor man's making of money, all righty? So, you know, so they talked about the Wall Street stock market. Well, the numbers was the poor man's form of uh, stock market. And it was based on the mutual funds. In fact, there was the mutual races that, and um, I think it was in Long Island or something like that. They would, the numbers would come out based upon the horse races, one at mm -hmm. one, and one at three and something like that. But the, the thing about that made it so nice that before all this technology of these cell phones and all this stuff, when the first number came out on 110th Street, within five minutes, people knew on 155th Street what the first number was. Okay, mm, mm. such was the word of mouth. So that's why Coca Cola, even though they'll sell, spend millions and millions of dollars to advertise, they still know that the best form of advertising is the word of mouth. Mm. Well, Casper Holstein really did it, man. I mean restaurants, beauty salons, barbershop. In fact, the numbers was run out of my father's barbershop when he was alive, okay? Mm. Um, uh, all kinds of establishments. And it kept a lot of people in our communities employed. And in fact, <clears throat> when Casper Holstein set up his business, it was on 136th Street right here in Harlem between 7th and 8th Avenue. Mm. At that time, he was making about maybe twelve thousand dollars a day mm -hmm. so if you now you got to understand in the 19 <clears throat> early 1900s and 20s when you're talking about the 1200 that's when a dime would get you three lemons mm -hmm. okay and that was in the time of my mother but before then a penny of you could actually go shopping and get groceries with about a dollar or two dollars yeah. So imagine that him making twelve thousand dollars a day on average from the numbers. That would be equivalent to almost making about a half a million dollars a day, probably more by today's standards. Mm -hmm. Did it. And also, there was another thing that made the whole thing good that the old hustlers used to do. They looked out for the community. Mm -hmm. Old ladies that didn't couldn't pay their rent. Bumpy Johnson did too. Right. They paid it. They would send the kids to summer camps. Uh -huh. um, they would help people out. Casper Holstein even set up what is called the, the um, Casper Holstein Award. It was, a, they call it the Opportunity Award because the writers in the Harlem Renaissance at, you know, during that period, he would give them a thousand dollars. Now, we thousand mm. dollars nowadays is still a nice piece of money because nobody's going to turn it away. But imagine in the twenties giving, getting a hundred, I mean, a thousand dollar award. Mm. Don't forget Milk, a nickel, you know, what? what's milk now? About five, six dollars, okay? So it just gives you an idea of how the money went. Not only that, there was no taxes at mm -hmm. that time. You know what I'm saying? Now you buy things and now taxes are taken out. There was none of that, none of that. But mm -hmm. Casper Holstein did this. He had the finest buildings in Harlem. He had the finest cars. In fact, on 138th Street between 7th and Lenox, there you can still see what is called the Holstein building. Okay. Right. You're right. You're right. Building in his honor. Um, but he did a lot for the community. And so one of the things is a lot of those hustles in the old days would send kids to summer camp. Uh, they would send them to paid leg bakes up in Bear Mountain, you know, but they look out for the kids. They made sure that those kids had something to do. And so he started that. And then the other hustlers, Nowadays, I don't know what these so-called hustlers call themselves doing other than trying to look pretty and the number of women they got. But these cats really, really did something. But the woman 
there was a woman who was quiet that really took the number game to the next level, and that was uh, Stephanie St. Clair. They was known as Madam St. Clair, or hmm. the hustlers called her the Dragon Lady. The she Dragon Lady. She started the 40 Thieves in Harlem on 144th Street between Lenox and Seven. That's why I love Harlem. Harlem is so rich. Rich in history, in yeah. History. But we, we're not taught about those things that took place here, but she did it. Now, she came from Martinique. Notice that these people that developed the Harlem the numbers came from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They didn't come from New York, Bronx, Brooklyn, you know, L.A. They came from the Caribbean islands. And she put some money together. Uh, and ten, she put $10,000 together of her own money and set up the first bank on 144th Street. She had about 40 number runners at that time. Then uh, she had 40 bankers, which, you know, that's where you go and put all the policy slips in. So mm. nothing to see people walking around and writing numbers on a number slip. And in mm. fact, in the old days, if they thought they would get busted, they'd get rid of the, the number slips. Mm. And in fact, there's a very, there's a scene in Malcolm X movie by Spike Lee where Malcolm was talking to one of the number runners where he had it all in his head. Yeah. He knew everybody's number. He knew the amount that they paid, what it was, box combination. But don't forget, they were paying these for pennies. Right, for right, right. Nickels for dimes. It was the volume they counted. So mm -hmm. on January the 16th of 1920 came the prohibition. So all of a sudden, the, the selling of liquor was stopped. Mm. So there was this guy in Tammany Hall, a Democrat named uh, Hines, uh, James J. Hines, who told this guy, the beer baron known as Dutch Schultz, to take a look at Harlem, to take a look and come to Harlem because these people up here was making all this money on nickel, dimes, and pennies. And that's when he came into, look, uh, Luke, uh, L Lucky Luciano came here, uh, Myers came here, all of those mobsters that you know in here but because of madam st Clair, she was the one that groomed this guy named bumpy johnson okay bumpy johnson was born in south carolina on october the 31st of 1905 he came to new york at age 15 and he was known as the enforcer so mm -hmm. even the mob didn't mess with bumpy he had he had um at that time an extermination company you know, mm -hmm. you know, extermination for roaches and rats. Yeah, and like that. yeah. But that extermination term worked both ways, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you mess with him, maybe you wouldn't be here the next day. Mm -hmm. But yet he too, like the other hustlers and whatnot of that time, donated to the community, paid old ladies rents. You know what I'm saying? But it was the dragon lady. She was fierce. She, was, she, she gave everybody a month for their running. But she was mm -hmm. the one that really, really took playing the numbers to the next level. And so it was therefore in the 60s and 70s that this guy named James Lawson with his crew was trying to get New York State. And I don't know what possessed him to do that because when I started out in radio in 1981, they would call me the numbers man because I was the only one in Harlem doing the numbers. Mm -hmm. but they were the ones that um, was trying to get New York State to become legal in playing the numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was basically now, and so eventually, although they resisted, the number games were still in Harlem, but then when New York State came into the numbers game, almost every state across the United States, in fact, in all 50 states, including outside in Ohio, uh, Hawaii, all of them now play numbers. They play numbers night, they play numbers day, they now got scratch out cards, yeah. they got all kinds of ways of getting your numbers, but all of this was due to the contribution that Casper Holstein made by figuring out a scheme to play numbers in the broom closet on Wall Street. I think, he, in fact, I think he was working for the Wall Street Journal at that time. Mm -hmm. But the point is that he developed a system where everybody played numbers and numbers are everything. And we always play numbers because numbers, or I call it numerology, is an ancient African system anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything you do are numbers. You numbers, can yeah. do anything with, without numbers. Each tooth in your mouth has a number. For mm. an athlete, one of the greatest honors is for his number to be retired. But I remember when my mother would drag me to church as a little boy, and on Sunday they say, you know, they had they had the little boy with the hymn number, 
And they said, mm, that number looks real good. And they would actually play that. Then they had these number sheets, okay? Big red new, big red sheets. Uh, they had a Ching Chow sheet that if Ching Chow pointed this way, that meant that number. I mm-hmm. mean, we just, but it kept a lot of brothers and sisters in our community. All right. And then mm-hmm. when the number game went legit in that sense. Now you can still play numbers, but you don't find as many number runners or number holes or whatever the case is, but they used to be a whole plethora of them, man, everyone. I mean, the numbers will run out of my father's barber shop. Uh, my mother worked in a beauty salon. Numbers was run out of that shop. But this is how brothers and sisters kept making extra change. You know, and for $1, you get $800. Like, and back in those days, too, we talking about yeah. a lot of money. You can yeah. do that with that. So it, it kept a lot of people employed. But it also worked out. In, in terms of danger in the sense of, uh, oh, and by the way, everybody looked out for each other. So mm-hmm. if I'm a number runner and I write down your number and it comes out and I give you your money. When I gave you money, you would always give me a couple of dollars too. So everybody kind of looked out for each other. All the money was circulating. Now they, now they don't do any of that. I, it's, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Seems to be the attitude. Mm-hmm. Go figure when did a mob take over the number game? If that, if I'm using the correct term, because a lot of yeah, people think the mob over yeah. right after the prohibition, which was on January the 16th of 1920. That's when they shut it down. And then uh, nine years later, on October the 29th of 1929, came the Depression. So it was again this Tammany Hall figure, a Democrat named James J. Hines, that pulled Dutch Schultz's coat that listen. You know, you used to be the beer baron because he was selling beer, selling liquor, okay, and pointed his nose north to Harlem. And that's how that happened. So then the mob came in. And then that's when, in fact, that there's legend has it that Bumpy Johnson and Doug Schultz had a real beef because Bumpy Johnson did not play. But mm-hmm. that's because he was groomed by Madame St. Clair, which the hustlers call the dragon lady. The dragon lady. Yeah, but he was fierce and he was a poet. A lot of people didn't know he was a poet. He was a nice guy, but he had this reputation that you just don't mess with Bumpy Johnson. So as you know, last, I guess last year, the year before last, they got a series, the Bumpy Johnson series with uh, my man, uh, uh, Whitaker, yeah, yeah. Whitaker yeah. And Bumpy Johnson. But he did a lot for the community and he did not play, his reputation was gold. Um, he did quite, quite a bit for the community but yet he did not take no stuff. Oh, by the way, mm-hmm. let me show you Bumpy Johnson because I have it in the book too, because I went out of my way and I got this photograph from his daughter, okay? This is him without the cap. Can you see it? Uh, We're at on the- um... Yeah, he's without the hat. Okay. That's Bumpy Johnson. Mm-hmm. That's one of the rare shots of Bumpy Johnson. The other Bumpy Johnson, you got his ball headed, but that's him when he was on the top of his game. I think this was in 1935. I think that was. But I did a lot of I did a lot of research on Bumpy Johnson, Madam St. Clair, and Casper Holstein. Why? Because I'm into numbers, and because I grew up in Harlem, like you and everybody's around me playing numbers. You know what I'm saying? Talking about the numbers. Oh, that's good. My mother's numbers was always five, five, five. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was her numbers. Everybody almost who grew up in Harlem had what is called a pet number. Then you had a cut number, which meant <laughs> like uh, the death number. If somebody famous really died, that mm-hmm. number wasn't going to be played that day. Uh, it's like when there was the collapse of the World Trade Center on September the 11th of 2001, mm-hmm. the very next year, the number 911 came, came out. Came out. I remember. Broke the bank. So <laughs> then the states start doing cut numbers. So now, if certain numbers come out like 1010, they won't. They you can't get it. You can't get it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because those are cut numbers. Because and people tend to play certain numbers. So, for example, remember in New York uh, just last week, where this this crazy guy shot up these the subway. The subway. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the subway number was 5551. That was cut that day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. that, that smoke bomb went off. People came out all injured and disoriented and people were shot and stuff like that. Close to 20 people were shot, actually. 
Mm -hmm. You know, they talked about 10, but it was more than 10 that was shot. But that that number, that train number was 55, 51. And that and they cut that number that day. That number did not play. So why do you think that these numbers, these cut numbers, why do you think they come out like if something tragic happened on 9-11 and the next year that number will pop in? What is that something spiritually that's going on? Because some people would think, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I know that we because we numbers come from us, African people. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we just have a feeling about something. There's the death number. There's this number. There's that number. But when an event like that happens, you know, this is why everybody took advantage. The following year was the collapse of the World Trade Center on 9-11. Mm -hmm. The state slept it. And the state lost a lot of money that day because 911 came out on 911. Mm. So since then, now the state has gotten into what is called cut numbers that that number's not going to play. If there's mm. a certain volume of people that's playing a certain number, they'll stop it. Okay? Triple threes, uh, quad fours, four fours, yeah. whatever the case is. So they will stop these numbers. But the state has done very well. <clears throat> And here's the irony, when the number game was introduced into New York with the New York State Lottery, it was for the purpose of raising monies for children's education. I ain't heard nothing about no education <laughs> children in decades, brother, since it started. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that was the front, that was the, that was the hook to get you, well, you know, we giving money for the education of our kids and our kids are just as ass backwards now as it was before. Even more, say. even more. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So uh -huh. it ain't much too went too much toward education, but as terms of a driver for mm -hmm. resources and income, okay. So for example, they used to have this thing in New York called Take Five only in the evening. What they did now is they broke it up into Take Five for the afternoon and Take Five for the evening. And they know that in our communities we tend to play more numbers than any other ethnic group in the communities. All righty. Mm -hmm. Black so, people. Yes, black people. Yes, yeah. us, us. Mm -hmm. Those numbers come from us. Yeah. And, and don't forget, because we had that modality of like getting the odds, and once you get the number, mm -hmm. it'll pay. So a dollar, if you play a pick three number in Harlem straight, you get 500. But if you pick four numbers and play it straight, you get 5,000. 5, yeah. Now they've got this, now they've got this company abroad that if you pay, uh, a number of pick four number for a dollar, you get nine thousand dollar return. So all that has done is just increase the desires. Now they got scratch off cards. They didn't have scratch off cards before, man. Mm -hmm. You know, any kind of way they can figure out to make the person's part with their money. And actually, in our communities, brother Rich is a multi billion ignorance. Ignorance in our community is a multi billion dollar industry. We'll take our money and go spend it elsewhere. If you look at other communities, whether it's Asian, uh, um, Jewish communities, Italian, Irish, that money circulates several times before it goes outside the neighborhood. But mm -hmm. in our communities, as soon as we get the money, where do we run? We run downtown to buy something. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about supporting businesses in our communities. We don't do it. And so as a result, we are actually starving in the midst of plenty. And I have yeah. a book, I have a section in my book called uh, uh, The Power of the Penny. And if you take one penny, Rich, mm -hmm. and double it for 30 days, you'll wind up with millions of dollars. Mm. And so what happens is this, when you're going into our communities and you have the products would say 99 cents, right? Mm -hmm. We leave that penny behind. So imagine the tens of thousands of transactions that goes on every day in that same store about a year or two later is expanding. Better equipment, better lights, all that stuff. And we leave that penny behind. I've had an incident where when I asked for the penny, I you know, gave the man a dollar, the product said 99 cents. I said, I'm holding my hand out for the penny. You act like I slapped his mother, man. Mm. Okay? So every penny counts. I'm sure you heard that. Mm, definitely. Every penny counts let, let me ask you this lloyd when you know people get hyped when they have the powerball and it'd be like 400 million or or 44 million or or 92 million and people be like god damn the powerball is whoever hits this is gonna is gonna hit the jackpot and usually the number comes out in like some redneck town that nobody never heard of it always seems to come out in some town and a white person always seems to win it 
Yeah, Why is I that? thought the same thing too. Why is that? <laughs> I, the only there was only one one that happened about maybe five or six years ago. A sister. It was a, a yeah, a sister. either sister or brother won a huge jackpot. The sister and they did played it. that in Harlem on 126th Street and Fifth Avenue, right across from the uh, Barbara Antia Theater at that time. Oh. Okay. But basically, normally we don't get it in our community. They always so, seem to be outside the community. Is it rigged? In, in some little town, hick town that I never heard of. So I don't know whether that's by design, but I know this. We're very conscious of how come those lotteries that are winning these big prizes aren't more in our communities rather mm -hmm. than others. I can tell you that. We just don't have no proof or nobody's been a whistleblower to drop the, the pattern of something. But there's got to be a pattern because they, they they got these things now called algorithms nowadays. Yeah, the algorithms will tell you how many people watching this show, how many people viewed it, how many people shared it. I mean, so don't think they ain't got no algorithms about the numbers that are being played every day too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people in the chat they feel like it's rigged. A lot of them they feel like the well, lot is rigged. I'm I happen to be in that camp too. Or mm -hmm. it's just a hell of a coincidence that a lot of these things are not taking place in our communities, which is where we need it most, yet we mm -hmm. spend the most money in these communities, our communities. Mm -hmm. So again, imagine all the black communities, whether Harlem or California or Cleveland or, or Florida, or whatever, and we're playing all these numbers, man, and they know it. And so as I said, they develop other ways of getting a scratch off. But when you talk about those huge mega lotteries and jackpots and stuff like that, the odds are about about 30 million to one. If you mm -hmm. look at it, from mm -hmm. all the numbers that got the lowest odds, it would either be take five, uh, that's got probably the lowest. You've got five numbers, about I think about 40 draws, but then what they did on these super lotteries now, then they added a, a Powerball and another Powerball to the Powerball. So now you gotta get all five numbers in order. Then you gotta get the Powerball. Then you know what I'm saying? So. It's all kinds of ways to make people part with their money. But playing the numbers is a very innate thing with us because numbers come from us. Numbers come from Africa. So so what do you think about numbers and dreams? A lot of people play the numbers that they dream about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes, the, they do. Yeah. And some people now you have some people who tend to be luckier th than others with mm -hmm. it. OK, mm -hmm. but I do tell people that if you're playing the numbers, expect to win. Don't play the number if your attitude is, well, I ain't going to win anyway. If you're not going to win anyway, why play? Mm -hmm. You know, but those who tend to have an attitude of expectation, if I'm going to play, I'm going to hit this puppy. They tend to do better than those with the mindset that, well, you know, I probably ain't going to play them, but let me spend the money anyway. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of the people who hit the numbers aren't the regular players that play every day. You got people that'll be in a liquor store or grocery store. And they will play a hundred dollars worth of numbers, but only yeah. one number is going to come out. Only one, and they do that on a regular basis. So we actually are starving in our communities by playing these games like that. You know, mm -hmm. I'll play numbers. The other day, my daughter says some number, and I played it because it came from a six-year-old. And in fact, I got your mother's book and gave it to my granddaughter and read mm -hmm. it to her too. And thank you. The book is excellent. The book thank is you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, but yeah, man, numbers are always with us. Numbers come from us. How can Pythagoras be the father of numerology, and yet he went into the land of Egypt and studied for 22 years? How can that be? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whether we use numbers to build the pyramids, numbers for entertainment, but we are the creators of numbers. And you ask an athlete, one of the greatest honors is to have his or her jersey retired. That no matter how long that franchise exists, like the Chicago Bulls, nobody can wear jersey 23, which is Michael Jordan's number. Okay. So these are these are honors. So we look at numbers, but we now look at numbers for entertainment. But the New York, New York and all these states, they have a they first started off with the evening. Now they all got afternoon and evenings. No matter mm. what, they will figure out ways to make people part with their money. Now, white people play numbers too. Don't don't get me wrong. They definitely play numbers just like we do, but mm. we play it in more abundance. We play it, we spend more money for it. You mm. know what I'm saying? So um, that's it. The, the, mo the major thing that's with New York and most of them, you either got a choice of pick three or pick four. Mm -hmm. You know, 
And that's how these numbers are played. And then you got other things, lottery, pick 10, which means that you got about 80 numbers. If there are about 10 numbers you get, you will get them. It's, it's, I mean, it's amazing how they designed this to induce people to play, and especially in our communities. So that's so, why we're starving in the midst of plenty. Somebody said cryptocurrency is the, is the, is the number game now. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's yes, that's it is. the new number game, y'all. Crypto, that, that huh? The new number game. And so therefore, like anything going in, you're always going to have some scammers. Okay. Mm -hmm. You always, so, so everybody, like I, you know, with you, you do your research. When you bring people on, whether it's a Billy Carson or whatever, you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so your stuff is thoroughly vetted and screened. So whether you recommend something, but they got people now that will say, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. But people in some, and especially in our communities, because we don't know and we're chasing the dollar that we really need to do our homework or go to a reputable person like yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you solid gold when it comes to all the information you bring to your shows. That's all I'm saying. I, I appreciate it, brother. What I, what I want to know is what was um, brilliant about Casper Holstein's system? What made his system, I mean, because this brother came out of nowhere and had this system that changed the entire world. What what was that's brilliant what, about it? That's what I would like to know. I would like to know, and still, I still need to do search, research. Does anybody have, did he keep journals? Did somebody write about him? Because here it is, he's working on Wall Street, sweeping floors, mopping, cleaning in a, in a, in a, in a, um, uh, 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 uh uh, shall we say, a room where all the pails and all that stuff is, and yet he came up with this concept. My question is, I'm like yours, how in the hell did this one man bring together a concept that captured the entire country? Yeah. Especially Harlem. But not only that, but made it work. You mm -hmm. got to understand, because it employed tens and thousands of African-American people in our community. Mm -hmm. from restaurants, to beauty parlors, to Bobby shops to this that you think about it. If anybody had a black business in Harlem, some numbers was going on. Somebody was either taking numbers or they mm -hmm. had the number holes or something. So that is the part that fascinates me. How how did you know? Because you know we we'll all come up with something like, "Yo, man, I got this idea," but that mm -hmm. was electric. That was electric, but evidently it was based upon a scientific system. But he is a seventh. Sevens are very analytical. Sevens go into the details. Sevens like to know the cause and effect and what to do. What <coughs> but I can tell you this, whatever it was, it worked magic in our community because it kept a lot of people head above water. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And to that, he gets credit. And you know, the irony is on January the 16th of 1920 with the shutdown of the prohibition, they are, had nerve to arrest Casper Holstein on for policy and put him in jail for one year. And what what does that mean for people off of policy? What does that mean? Arrest them policy. policy. When 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 I take your numbers, mm -hmm. or Simon's numbers, or anybody and write them down, those mm -hmm. are called policy slips, which was mm -hmm. illegal. Mm -hmm. So they arrested him on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in the Spanish community, they had Spanish Raymond. All right. Spanish Raymond did for the Spanish community what Casper Holstein did for the black community. Mm. You know, and so in fact, I got a picture of him in this book. But if y'all can get this book. I've got a very detailed about maybe 10 to 12 pages written about this. So people can really, really see it's called Forever Harlem. And it was published by, at that time, the Daily News. And the Daily News at that time wanted a very small picture of Casper Holstein. And because I was writing the column, I says, no, it's gotta be the big picture. So as soon as it opens, we know exactly, is it clear who this brother was, okay? And so I just made it very, very clear in that way. So. Um, that's, that's pretty much it, but numbers are going to be here to stay and it, and notice is definitely hooked up in every black community. And that's why I was saying that if we understood the power of the penny, if we could mm -hmm. double a penny every day for 30 days, like one day is a dollar. I mean, one penny, then two pennies then four pennies then eight then 16, 32, 64. At first for the couple of days, it don't seem like a lot, but you mm -hmm. get into the 18th and 19th and 20th day of doubling your penny. Now you get into the tens of thousands of dollars. By the time you reach 30, 31 days, 
It's mm-hmm. in my blue book, the one that's right behind me over my shoulder. Did you see those different color books? Mm-hmm. Well, the blue book, I have it, The Power of the Penny, that shows that if you can double your pennies for 30 days. Mm-hmm. So imagine if we had a collective consciousness. Right, right. And double it. Brother, we, we would not go through any of this. And let me tell you, and once we understand and control the value of our dollar, we will have respect. Yeah, definitely. There's no question about that. But because we'll spend our money anywhere without discernment of where and when to, you know, black businesses can't open up stores in other communities and expect to thrive. Yet mm-hmm. everybody can come into our communities and expect to thrive. Like there's there's um there's this famous restaurant called Benny Hanna's. Benny Hanna's an upscale restaurant. I don't know what you right. heard of it. Yeah. Oh, the guy got started by selling ice cream in Harlem. Mm. They all come to Harlem. <laughs> they all come to Harlem, man. That's that's how it that's how it is. They all come into the black communities because they know we are consumers. That's how we've been programmed to be consumers, not business persons, mm-hmm. not being financially astute to things like that. We Mm -hmm. just get it and we just spend it without any thought of knowing the consequences. So, yes, we'll buy Versace, whatever the case is. So Versace and all them are getting over. Okay, Mm -hmm. we'll get our kids some very expensive uh, fashion made names, uh, shoes that only last a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess it's to make us feel good psychologically. But financially, man, we we're just giving our money away. And yet we are a multi, multi billion dollar collective black people across this country indeed do you ever in the vote yes do you ever uh like some people would assume a brother like you who's into numerology uh one of the best when it comes to numerology and a brother like king simon a lot of people would think y'all will play the the lotto a lot because y'all know the science numbers so do you uh, you never use your science to make money in the lotto system if lottery or mega is 32 million to one Brother, the chance of getting struck by lightning is one million to one. Mm -hmm. So here it is. You got 32 times that amount. So no. So people have asked me if I hit numbers. Yes, I've hit numbers. But Mm -hmm. it wasn't scientific, nor would I invest all my time because the odds are so much against the individual playing. So Mm -hmm. with the, the, the initial lottery, it didn't have that many odds. But then they added a Powerball. Then they added a Powerball to the Powerball and other stuff. And so it ballooned from like maybe a million to one to now it's about 30 something to one. And if you read carefully on these cards, they will tell you what the odds are. Mm-hmm. And again, the odds of getting struck by lightning in and of itself is one million to one. So when you got these number systems, these number games, there's it, this millions and millions to one before you even get a chance to hit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'd rather reinvest my money in my children, their growth, their development. And if God blessed me to hit a number, but that's that's not where my energy is. Mm-hmm. You know, mine is to raise people's consciousness so they can be in the right place at the right time in harmony with the universe. That mm-hmm. is more valuable to me. Now, if mm-hmm. you hit a number, I mean, people have told me they've seen me for consultations. One guy, uh, he said he hit a number for 86,000. That's because he had spent all the money. Now he came back to me and told me he did. <laughs> but he didn't show no blessings. See, in the old days, if I got some blessings, I pass some blessings on to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a period of reciprocity. Nowadays, uh, well, yes, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm out of money now. And he told me. That's why he came back to me because he hit the number. Because I'll say, well, you're like in your case, your numbers, uh, Brother Rich, born on the 17th of September are the 8, 6, and 5, right? So I'll give the client what their key numbers are. They think it's always for lottery. But this guy did win over 80 something thousand dollars but when did he come back to me when all the money was gone he expected yeah. me to give him another number not Crazy. saying brother here's a little something for you and your family mm-hmm. there's a woman in chicago i told her what numbers to play she was born august the 28th she actually sent me the video where on tv she won two hundred and thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars she gave her church fifty thousand dollars <laughs> she gave a a and brother, at that time, I was starving. Yeah. At that time, I'm trying to keep my kids in school, mm-hmm. all my babies in school. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I needed help, man. I needed help. And I asked, well, and I said to her, can you even loan me the money? Mm-hmm. I ain't getting no money. But then mm-hmm. years later, when she's out of money, guess who I get the call from? See, so we, we've lost yeah. a lot that our elders used to have. 
I said, yeah, you know, it's that, yeah. It's sad that our people are like that. Shout out to Lloyd. His cash app is at the bottom of the screen if you want to support the brother cash app and PayPal. Uh, Lloyd, I had a uh, question. So I seen yeah. somebody in the chat ask. Uh, let me see. I lost. Okay. They want to know um, how do numbers correspond to the planetary system and people? Okay, good. When I teach persons, the one thing is to learn the nature of the planets, because if you know the nature of the planet, you know the nature of the zodiac sign, and you know the nature of the person's number. Mm -hmm. Your planetary ruler is Mercury. Your wife's planetary ruler as a Sagittarius is Jupiter. Well, each planet rules a sign. So I'll start with the sun. The sun mm -hmm. has rulership over uh, the sign of Leo. The moon has rulership over the sign of cancer. Then if you look at the number three, which is Jupiter, that that has over the rulership of Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter. And one time Pisces that was originally ruled by Jupiter, so they rediscovered and reassigned Neptune to it. Okay. So each zodiac sign or each planet. So let me see, we started with the sun, the moon, uh, Mars, that governs Aries and Scorpio. Uh, now they reassigned Scorpio to Pluto. Uh, then you got Venus, that still is the same, which is uh, which is Taurus and Libra. Uh, you have Mercury, that's still the same, which is uh, Virgo and Gemini. Uh, then you have Saturn, which is assigned to Capricorn. It was originally assigned to Aquarius. Also, the Simon, the signs of Simon and I are Aquarians, but they reassigned it and gave it Uranus. So I tell my students always go with the original seven planets and you won't go wrong. These same planets govern a number. So if somebody says about Mercury, your planetary ruler, mm -hmm. as an astrology, I was saying, oh, you must be talking about a Virgo or Gemini, but as a numerologist like King Simon and I, oh, you're talking about the number five. But the beautiful part why Simon and I are astro numerologists, because we bind both the beautiful arts, which are ancient African sciences, be clear, okay? Mm -hmm. Is the ancient African sciences. So we blend both of them together. So to me, you're not just a Virgo, uh, Brother Rich, you're a Virgo eight person because you're born on the, in the sign of Virgo, but you're born under the number eight. So you are an earth sign with an earth number, which means you're very pragmatic, very grounded. You know how in these action movies that got the characters that run down the hall and just jump out the window? Yeah. Well, you ain't going to do that, brother. You might run down the hall, but you're going to say, mm, I don't think so. You know, and you go look somewhere else to jump because each element and each planet brings to the table of life their own characteristics, their own strength, as well as their own challenges, too. So eight people are normally very conservative. They tend to be misunderstood initially, but yet the most powerful movers and shakers on this planet financially have been on the 17th. J. Paul, uh, I mean, uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller, born on the 17th of July. Then you got J.P. Mm. Morgan, born on the 17th of uh, April. And then mm. if you look at Michael Jordan, born on the 17th, how long has he been out the game? Well, right. each week he's still selling retro sneakers, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have the ability yourself. That's why you're my new best friend. In that, you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, but people born on the 17th, because eight represents money, power, authority, achievement, recognition, things of that nature. They just seem to know the value of a dollar when they get their hands on it, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but you have the same attributes as all of these other guys, but you're building. You have, I mean, when I first came on your show with my online course, which is in February, March of 2020, because of being on your show, it took off. Yeah, I remember. I didn't even call yeah. you. So yeah, like, I remember. Yo, that class, that online course, thanks to you, I now have over 3,300 students registered in 72 wow. countries translated into 25 languages because of you. Just from that one show we did? Yes. That's the power of these shows I do. I'm, no, that's I'm... the power of 17, brother. That's what I'm Woo! trying to he's a... <laughs> he's a... <laughs> Now, take another person. Take Muhammad Ali. Until yeah. Muhammad Ali came on the boxing scene, boxers were getting paid little next to nothing to knock each other's block off. Mm -hmm. And when he came on the scene, now people get paid millions. What does Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather got paid? What, about 20-something million dollars for a fight? For a fight but yeah. Had it not been for Muhammad Ali. Oh, he's a 17. He's a 17. Huh? 
Muhammad Ali's is 17. January 17th, 1942. Yes, okay. that's his birthday. Yes. Right, right. Wow. Wow. So 17s are very, very powerful. And mm. they normally do well with anything that creates a flow. I'm willing to bet you there are probably many other guests you've had on your show that has done prospered very, very well. You, on the show. And I hope so so happen. so many. I, I won't name any names, but I get the calls and they tell me, and I'm like, damn. I didn't know I was I it, I was it, I, I wasn't aware at first that that was happening because I'm on the other side. But then y'all yeah. start calling and telling me. I'm like, oh shit! I didn't know that was it was going down like that. I'm Seventeen like, wow. in the tarot card is called the Eight Pointed Star of Venus. It's a beautiful card, but it represents money, power, authority, achievement, recognition. It is the number of maturity. It is it is all of all things material. The so, last. The last yeah. brother, a uh, brother named Raku, was was telling me. So shout out to Raku. Raku was telling me about you know how much um you know he benefited from coming on the show. So that's when I, I realized I'm like, damn, I ain't know it's like that. No, being on your show is a gold mine. For those yeah. who said numerically, okay. Yeah. My thing is, I pray that they therefore give you props, give yeah. you support. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as you soon as you told me what several months ago, did your mother put out a book? I bought that yeah. puppy right away for my granddaughter. I appreciate it. You know it. what I'm saying? <laughs> so these are things I still want to advertise on your show at some point later, but I want to give back that which you've given to me. That's the law of reciprocity that we've yes. seen to have lost. That's why we all got these problems that didn't used to be that way. In the days of our parents, they would have rent parties. I couldn't pay my rent, so we have rent party. We collect money so your rent could be paid. Next who, month, it might hey, be my turn. Lloyd, Lloyd, who didn't a black person invent the whole susu system? Yes, we have... And it's all designed to survive, brother. Survive, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That's all it was designed, the susu system, yes. Damn. All, all of it, all of it. Do you know who, do we know who invented that or we just... Uh... No, I didn't look into it, but it doesn't surprise me that this susu system works. I, I still don't kind of understand the principle of it, mm -hmm. but I know if applied with ethics, everybody eventually gets their turn. Mm. Everybody mm. eventually get their turn. They get their nice fat envelope, okay? Because we all in the same boat together, Brother Rich. And so we need how to begin to reclaim that collectiveness in terms of keeping our heads above water. But right now, they don't want me to tell you what I'm doing over here. Mm. It's starving yet all ethnic groups get together, pool their resources, and build, especially in the Asian community. Mm -hmm. Now, you got Madam C.J. Walker that first developed a hair product, the first woman, mm -hmm. black or white, the first millionaire woman. Mm -hmm. And yet you go into any of these stores in Harlem or elsewhere, they're not owned or run by us mm -hmm. selling products, hair products, mm -hmm. anything, grease, combs, anything. Mm -hmm. And yet we develop these things. What happens along those things? Mm -hmm. So again, the part of the programming and the educational system for us, people of color, is for us to be consumers, which means we make this money and we spend it with somebody else, but we're not trained to spend it among ourselves. One of the mm. few instances was in the Soweto riots of South Africa. Uh, also, the Selma, uh, when uh, Rosa Parks refused to get off the bus. Right, right. And, and for over a year, Black people did not get on that bus. That shut that bus line down. And guess what happened a year later? Everybody could get on the bus and sit wherever they want to. Mm. So once people respect our dollars, you'll see we'll have far less disrespect in our communities. What? Well, let me get to... Let me get to another question, Lloyd. Um, shout Yaya. Uh, she wants to know, a website said her rising was Leo. Now, all of a sudden, it says Virgo. When the coordinates, time, and chart was the same, why is that? Mm, I don't know. For example, people born in the Middle East, they have one birthday. They come here, it's got another birthday. So mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. But I do know this. It all depends on, A, it may have been a correction. She may have thought, thought she was born at 7.53 p.m. because the time that you're born indicates your ascendant, where the sun is rising on the eastern side of the horizon, right? Mm -hmm. So she may have thought she was born at 7.53 a.m. And then when she finally got her chart, she found that she was born at 7.53 p.m., which mm -hmm. changes the whole flavor. But mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, uh, but her rising represents the way she appears to other people. So I saw a, a lady that was very tall the other day. Capricorn is the tallest of the signs. So I mm -hmm. said, by any chance, would you Capricorn? In fact, that's when Simon and I was in Atlanta. 
mm. uh, going to the, uh, we were trying to catch up with you that day. It was at the, um, the, the new Black, Black Wall Street. Street. The Black Wall Street, yeah. Stone Mountain, yeah. right. Yeah. So Simon and I walked into this place. She's real tall. I says, by any chance you Capricorn? She said, yes, because your sun sign, your moon, your moon represents how you think. Mm. But your ascendant or, or a rising sign represents the way you appear visually to people when they look at you. Like I'm an Aquarius. Aquarius is supposed to be tall by nature. I'm mm. short, but my rising is Virgo, which is considered a short sign. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can almost figure out by looking at a person what their ascendant is, and then sometime by their personality what their sun sign or their moon is too. Mm. So there's a lot to this. It's fascinating. Yeah. No, it's truly fascinating. It's truly, truly fascinating. Um, somebody says your birthday number shows your outer expression to others, your personality. Is that true? Well, yes. In numerology, the beauty I like about it, unlike most sciences, they deal with your birthday, but numerology also deals with your name as well. Mm -hmm. So when I look at her name, for example, each letter rules a sign. So, for example, if I do her name right quick in my mm -hmm. head, that would be uh, 10, 17, 10, 17, 21. So that tells me one of her parents is either Sagittarius or Pisces or born on the 3rd, the 12th, the 21st, or the 30th of the month. Mm -hmm. These numbers act as it. So your birthday is what you're here to learn, but your name is like the teacher, what you already know. So the rule of thumb is to have your name in alignment with your birthday so you can become what is self-taught. So when Shakespeare says, what's in the name? The response was everything more than you can imagine. Mm, mm. She asked a great question. D, let's get to another question. Um, somebody wants to know, does 2022 year of Taurus last longer than one year? What should Tauruses do for success this year? In a way, yes. In other words, I tell people that 2022 actually started around September, October, just after your birthday of 2021. It's, I call October the preview month. It's like you're taking your lady to a movie, right? Mm -hmm. Well, before you go to a movie, before I mean, when you go to the movie, before you see the main movies, what do you see? You see the trailers. Ironically, the trailers used to be seen at the end of the movie. Now they move it to the front of the movie. So if you want to see the movie, you got to see the trailers first. Like, yeah, well, I want to see this. No, I don't. So late September, October gives a snapshot of what is to come for the following year, in this case, 2022. Mm -hmm. So that means from late September into October of last year, Tauruses, which is ruled by the number six, because 2022 adds up to a six, and six is ruled by Venus. There's that question you asked about the planetary rulership. Mm -hmm. And the planetary ruler of Venus rules Taurus and Libra, respectively, or anybody born on the 6th, the 15th, or the 24th of the month. So that person would be correct. It does last in just one year, but you get a little snapshot of it about 30 days. So if you get a calendar now for the new year, they'll give you a calendar that's going into September, October, November, then before you actually get into the full year of 2022. I've got one here you know, mm -hmm. on my, on my table. So that's how it starts. So it does last that long. So next year, 2023 will actually start in September, October of this year, going into 2023, which would be the seventh. So anybody who is born under the signs of cancer or Pisces, or therefore born on the second, the seventh, the 11th, the 16th, the 20th, 25th, or 29th of the month, it's going to be their time. Your time, Rich, is 2024. Because September, October 2023 into 2024, well, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 is 8. Mm. Brother, you'll be my new best friend for all that year, okay? <laughs> you be everybody's new best friend. 2024 is my year, huh? That's my year? Eight. And not only that, this, see, your numbers, your key numbers, this year is important for you, too. Say that again? Say that again? What? This year what? This year is equally important to you, too, because from your birthday, your key or important numbers that Simon and I know are the 8, 6, and 5. Mm -hmm. So last year, 2021 was the year of the five. When you add those four numbers, for those that may say, how does that work? That mm -hmm. should have been a chain game changer for you in terms of being structured and organized. This year, 2022 is the year of the six, which is one of your numbers. And then you're in a five personal year, which means change, change in residence, change in location, change in jobs, whatever the case is. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what you've done. Mm -hmm. 
But the year that's going to really shine, where you're going to really rock the house, will be in the fall of 2023 in the 2024. Everybody gets a turn. The only thing about the cosmos, you got to wait. See, right. we're in the world of instant gratification, just say water. We think things that happen right away. But in the world of the universe, it don't happen like that. You just have to be patient. But everybody gets a turn. Mm. Man, I, 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 I love this. I love this science, man. And when, when you yeah. and King Simon start talking, I just be amazed, man. I'll be truly amazed. And let me tell you about Simon, my buddy. Simon yeah. is not only my buddy, but my brother and somewhat my mentor as I've mentored him. Mm -hmm. Because of the platform of StreamYard, I learned that from him. When I did my first slide presentation on palmistry, which is my third love, mm -hmm. I was inspired by him. So he has done a lot for me. But here's the thing. The title of his book, Numbers hey, of... Hey, hey, Lloyd, I got to run upstairs real quick. Give me two minutes. You can keep talking, brother. Yes, Just keep yes, talking. Yes, yes. Right. yes, please do. Well, what happens is Simon, King Simon, my buddy, my brother, wrote this book called Numbers of Simple but people are complicated. Well, there is, if you look on the best-selling numerology books of all times, and it, it goes from one to a hundred, all right, in order of their preference, Simon's book is ranked in the thirties. So Simon, Simon has wrote this book less than 10 years ago. So what I'm saying is Simon with his unique self has done something that is very masterful in the literary world especially in the world of the metaphysics. Because before then, very few people of color, black, was writing on these subjects, which is an ancient African science. Well, what he did was he took that book, and that book is now ranked amongst the 100 best numerology books of all times. Now, my book is number eight in the ranking order from one to eight, one to one, one to 100. Well, my orange book that's right behind me over my left shoulder is ranked number eight. The blue book, which is at the end of it, is ranked number about 40. But it's King Simon's book. And don't forget, I've been writing books since 1980. So, I mean, I deserve it, but King Simon has written this book less than 10 years. And already it has met the quota of being the top 100 mm. best-selling numerology books of all time. So I can I can salute Simon, and I'm glad I know the brother too, because he's done a lot for me. Indeed, let's get to another question. I'm having fun with these questions and hearing Lloyd answer these questions. Did I miss something? Somebody says, "How does this work for premature babies?" And, and uh, well, whatever you, you, time the baby comes, that is the time of its arrival. Okay. You can have prenatal babies too that come as early as like uh, there's one I know that started out at about. They weighed seven grams or something incredible. They survived, though, you know. Mm. So mm. it's whenever normally there is a natural cycle of nine months. OK, mm. but then there's some babies. In fact, I'm a premature baby. I should have been a Pisces. I had mm. nerve to ask my mother how come she couldn't wait. Like but if <laughs> my mother, when the water breaks, brother, all bets are off. I don't care. She said she was moving something that didn't hear I got under the sign of Aquarius, too. But, I, I actually came late. I'm a late baby. I came later yeah, than what I was. Some come early, some come on time. Some Out of my six children, only one of them came on time. Mm. On time, on the month, the day, and the year, they said. After mm. that, none of them came at the times they projected. So doctors can take a look at it, but there is a way for a mother to determine if she's pregnant and yet don't know the sex of the child, what the sex of the child is likely to be from a number concept that came. I've been doing this so long. I've been getting all kind of concepts, man. I don't know where they come from, but they all work. Let's let's do um a few, let's do about five number readings. Remember, we used to do the number readings. Yeah, people? yeah. Let's do, a, <laughs> let's do let's do a couple. We're gonna do a couple for y'all. Uh, but make sure your support, man. This is this is some good stuff. Make sure y'all you support the channel. Cash App, Dollar Sign, Black Magic, three six three family. Please I do. definitely appreciate the love and the support. I and you got a wonderful your... family too. You got a fine family, so yes, they should support you. Thank, thank you. They making noise now. They just came. They making a bunch of noise upstairs. But <laughs> yeah, man, listen, family, man, we gonna we we gonna get this. We gonna get back into our sciences. We gonna figure this out. It, so it don't be full circle. When yeah. I started in the seventies with this, there were no black people that wrote a book on astrology or numerology. Now there are boatload of books written by us. Simon himself by himself. Has written four books on the subject. 
I've written six books on the subject, okay? Then you got Brandon that's wrote books. You got Jackie Levine that's wrote books. You got Kaya French. These are all African-Americans or brothers and sisters that are now bringing their presence to it because it's almost like we're reclaiming our ancient African science. Um, okay, let's get to, we're gonna get to about two or three. Okay, whatever you got is fun for me. This is fun. Yeah, yeah, I ain't. Um, let me see. Let's get to. And I, I would like to ask, uh, answer one, address one question that is often asked. In <clears throat> that is the question of religion. Does what we do go against the laws of God and religion? And no, is the answer to the question. You got to understand, religion is a belief. That's why man go to war. Although. In, in Christian, you look at the Ten Commandments, one of the major Ten Commandments is thou shall not kill. Yet, there's been killing since Cain killed Abel in the Bible, okay? Thinking my God is better than your God. But can you name me, Brother Rich, a war that's been fought in the sign of Virgo? Can you name me one? Can you name me a war fought in the name of the number eight? Can you name me one? Mm, nah, brother. <laughs> brother, you be holding your breath forever. That's yeah. my point, okay? Mm. <laughs> but I uh, this, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna get to a couple of regulars uh, who I see support the channel. Uh, Bed Star 187 Metro, February 18th, 1980. This is a person that think he's the greatest thing since Ice Cream are close to it. Okay, that's that's how he rolls. And today is the 18th day of the month. Interestingly enough, okay, um, he's a man that doesn't take orders well. He's a man though that was very influenced by the women in his life, whether it was a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, a sister or somebody in that way, uh, this particular year for him, he's in a year where he's ready to make some power moves in a big time way. He's doing a lot of growing up. He also happens to be in a pregnancy cycle, not him. Now, it all depends on what his situation is. A, he can look at it in a biological way if he's married or got a lady, but it's all these numbers that Simon and I know speak symbolically, which means he could give birth to an idea, birth to a plan, birth to a business, since he doesn't take orders well. And since his numbers are the nine, the four, and the one, then next year he will be in a nine personal year, and the year after that of 2023, he'll be in a one. So that tells me after the summer, he's going to do extremely well. He's mm. going to cut some cords, cut some people loose, but by that time, going from the fall of 2023 into 2024, his, he's going to aim for the sun, even if he only hits the moon, but he's going to think big. His key to lucky numbers are the nine, eight, excuse me, the nine, four, and one, and his best days are always on a Tuesday and a Sunday, more than anything else. Okay. And he tends to be accident prone too. All right, I got a super chat, so I appreciate, I got one a super chat, so I got to show the love to the person with the super chat who, who shows the support. Uh, this, one on the 18th. 18th. Today's the 18th. See, 1984. Yes. They, well, they, this, they even got the time, 6.54 a.m. Right, that means that the sun was in the 11th house when they were born. So if they get an astrology chart done because the time designate what house the sun was sitting at at that time of birth. So since on the Eastern horizon is six, 6 a.m. and we go now a little past 6 a.m., that means the sun is sitting in the 12th house. That's exactly where it is, all right, going up. But anyway, this person is very dynamic if this is a woman, it tells me they would get along better with the men than the women. If it's a guy, it tells me he might be drawn to careers or occupations where he was uniform, like law enforcement, construction, the military, uh, corrections, or toolers, machinists, or whatever. Nine people tend to be more accident prone than illness prone because nine is a fire number. Now, diseases don't like fires, but accidents and nicks and cuts and burns and bruises and breaks and fender fenders and confrontations tend to like number nines. But his lucky numbers are the nine, five, and six. And his best days are always on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. Those are his best days. That's a nice contribution they made to your family. That's yeah, nice. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely uh, I like appreciate that. it. I like I'm that trying to. Uh, I, okay, hold up. I don't want to. Let me get to the next super check. Um, uh, March 29th, 1968. At 6.46 a.m. This is an Aries 2 person. That means their lucky numbers are the 2, 7, and 6. 
that means that this Aries woman is very, very intuitive, very, very psychic to a degree. So I would advise any guy dealing with her, don't play the sister. That would be my best advice to her. You know, like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. She does. She's sensitive. And although she's a fire sign, she's affectionate. And here's the irony. Her birthday suggests she has a very sensitive stomach or digestive tract. Yet she's drawn to things like that are very hot and spicy, like jalapeno peppers and stuff like that. And yet we'll pay the price a little later on with a little gas or indigestion. But she's really a sweetie pie. She likes to collect things. She likes to dance. And she's very romantic. And she's got poetry skills, too. Mm. Her lucky numbers, you know, the two, seven, and six, and Mondays and Fridays are her best days. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry for the noise, y'all. Let's get to the next one. Uh, <laughs> six, one 12, 24. 1986 at 649 p.m. Okay, this is a Sagittarius. This is a air, this is a Gemini three. They're an air sign with a fire number, which means they're very passionate, they're very logical, they're very reasoning in their thing. And they are coming now. Notice they're born at 649 p.m., which means that at six is on the eastern side of the horoscope or the hemisphere, then six p.m. is on the other. So you bring it down, that means they're Sun is probably somewhere in the seventh house. Uh, that's what that means. But this is a person that's very active, very creative, very expressive, a natural flirt too. Not that they be trying to break up some relationships, but they know how to bat those eyes if they think they slipping, okay? Very ambitious. The worst thing to tell a number three, born on the third, the 12th like this person, the uh, 21st or the 30th, that you can't do this and can't do that. For mm -hmm. some reason, threes when told they can't do something or you'll be a failure all i've done inadvertently was like the seed of success under them so they're lucky and by the way this person don't look their age which is why they're getting not only younger relationships but relationships from different cultures too and they need to speak the second language for that reason so their key numbers are the three six and five and their best days are wednesday thursday and friday all right let's uh yeah, I, I want to get to a couple of them, Lloyd. So you ain't got to give them that long of a reading. Okay, I, you know, I'll keep it short. I, I get carried away. I get carried if if y'all want the long, the long, long version, how, do, how can they contact you for the long version of the Well, reading? what they can do is go to my website, lloyd-strayhorn.com. That's L-L-O-Y-D-strayhorn, S-T-R-A-Y-H-O-R-N.com. And when they go to lloyd-strayhorn.com, brother Rich, they can sign up for the free monthly newsletter that I have out now for April. Uh, they can get my books and whatnot. They can also sign up for the numerology course that I have online that is across this entire planet that started with your show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, they can sign on and learn how to do what I do. And uh, that's it. But when they go to my website, lloyd-strayhorn for the newsletter, make sure that they leave their email address so they can get it. You can leave your birthday. That's optional. And no, we will not sell your email. I have ethics about what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't sell people's emails. I don't. All right, let's run through a couple real fast, my brother. Let's get to, yeah, yeah. 10 20, 1987 87 at 4 37 a.m. This is Sister Lotus Flower. Born the same day as Kamala Harris. Very sweet. Very, you got to be in the hygiene. Cleanliness is next to godliness with this sister, okay? Uh, she's very detailed. She doesn't miss a trick. Uh, she's very sensitive, romantic. In fact, she needs a hug twice a day and she loves to dance. Her key or lucky numbers are the two, seven, six, and Mondays and Fridays are her best days. Okay, let's get to the next one. This is April, Jan a lot of sisters. April, January was born March 30th, 1984. This is a woman that knows people everywhere it goes. That's why it would be hard for her to sneak around. She I could take her to a remote place in Tahiti and, a and somebody would say, hey, April, who know you here? Okay, those kinds of things. Uh, uh, it's interesting. Her name is April, January, which are the two months. But at, at any rate, her lucky numbers are the three, six, and nine. And she's a fire sign with a fire number. So any guy messes with her, be prepared. You cannot just talk some smack. You got to back it up because that's how she's going to roll with it. This is a younger brother. This is an interesting birthday. Nine, nine, ninety, nine. <laughs> nine is the number of leadership. Nine is the number of humanitarians. They are global, universal, international. Because of all of those nines, and don't forget, they're born in 1999. So they have a total of five nines running across their birthday. Mm. So that means nine people like to be the master of their faith, the captain of their ship, and nines challenges is alcohol. So I would advise this person with all these nines in their name, 
that they and alcohol should not become best friends, okay? Mm. Because nine is a confrontational number on the negative side. And so let's say he would be the kind of guy that's got this Clark Kent attitude, go into a bar, have a couple of drinks, and they can kick everybody's butt up in the bar. So it would be to his advantage to use that nine leadership energy to be the master of his fate, the captain of his ship, determine his own destiny and inspire humanity to rise to the highest level possible. His numbers, by the way, are the nine, five, and six. All right. Uh, Ashley is 12, 21, 1983 at 2 22 PM. She's a triple, she's a triple three across the board. Cause she's born on the 12th month of three. She's born on the 21st of three. She's born in 1993. That adds to 21, which is a three. So her mm -hmm. destiny is a nine, which means she's going to be global, universal, know people wherever she goes, famous people. So mm -hmm. if she gets some famous actor like Denzel and saying, go watch my face, she will get dirty because mm -hmm. that's not going to be the only person she's going to meet. But she is very well known. She likes to express herself and she doesn't look her age, which is why she attracts younger relationships too, as well as long distance relationships. But her lucky numbers are the three six and nine that Nikola Tesla understood that those who understand the three, six and nine understand the universe. And that would be Ashley. Okay. The next one is four, twenty. Oh, a lot. I tell you a lot of Queens getting these readings, right? These mini readings. Yeah. I hear y'all. I see y'all Queens. Make sure you go to the brother's website to get the long one. All right. This uh, sister is million dollar mama is 423, 1967. That makes sense because her sign of Taurus is the money sign. The second house in astrology mm. is called the house of possessions and money. And that sign is Taurus. That's her. So she's got good taste. But it not only tells me that she's all, she's never had a problem attracting the opposite sex. That's never been her issue. What mm. it is, is finding somebody who can understand that she is more just as brilliant mentally and spiritually as she is outwardly too. And so I would see the secret to holding on to this sister to let her go. Don't be sweating her because you know, you happen to be dating her and she embraces you. Give her some breathing space. Uh, her key numbers are the five, six, and nine, and her best days are Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday. All right. Let's this get is her to... year. If she's a Taurus or Libra, this is their year, or born on the 6th, 15th, or 24th. Let's uh, get to the next one. Uh, Lamar is May 25th, 1981. Okay, this person is an air sign with a water number, which means they're very analytical. They like to be their own best company. On one hand, they're very outgoing, but yet they're very private. And a perfect example of this is Miles Davis, the famous trumpeter. Mm. Uh, if he could read the biography of Miles Davis, he was a complicated person, but so would this person be too. On one hand, getting very, very, know how to get along with the public, yet like to be his own best company. Thanks, Simon. Simon always looks out for me. Thank you so much, man. Indeed. Uh, LloydStrayhorn.com. Cash it's app, Lloyd. dollar sign, numbers in you. PayPal, mm -hmm. learn from Lloyd Actually, at Gmail. The PayPal, the PayPal is uh, LloydStrayhorn at MSN.com. Okay. But All the right, cash app is correct. Dollar sign, numbers in you. And my website is there to sign up for the free monthly newsletter. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. K right Kiki, you think you slick, Kiki. Kiki wants a reading for her daughter and her. Her daughter was 7-7-2017, seven, seven, and she is 12-10-1982. Okay, well, if she's 12-10-1982, her numbers are the 1, 4, and 3. And if you notice, the year her daughter was born is 2017, which adds up to a 10, mm. which matches her number exactly. So it mm -hmm. tells me that the father of her child could either be a Pisces or Cancer or mm -hmm. born on the 7th of the 2nd, the 7th, the 11th, the 16th, the 20th, the 29th, the 25th, or the 29th of the month. But it tells me about her daughter. Her daughter is very analytical, very sophisticated. Her daughter will, the mother will tell you her daughter thinks her friends think she's snooty or stuck up, which she's not, but she's very analytical, like to ask questions, and can be very sarcastic. And she's, her son is in the first house since she's born at 5.49 a.m. in the morning. Okay, okay. Let's get to the next one. Uh, it's 2-22-1949. That's interesting. You put the two in front of the zero. This is the year 2022. Mm -hmm. But this is a master number person. Their key numbers are the four, one, and three. Their best days are always on a Sunday and a Thursday. But this is a person that's very futuristic, which is why they should not always tell everybody what their plans are. And because they tend to know things before 
other people know, which is why they'll have secret enemies by jealousy, envy, or insecurity. But this year is her year to have fun. The cycle she's going through is a good luck cycle, lady luck, prosperity, money, abundance, contact. She's going to have a hell of a good year and even more so next year. Okay. Next one is 9 16 1983. Seven is a sign, the number that I like to analyze. Virgo is a sign that likes to analyze. So this is a very analytical person. This is a person, Brother Rich, that will never run out of questions. So mm. if you're dealing with this person, your thing is <laughs> like, yo, Dan, why you always ask me to me? <laughs> you, you keep asking me questions. But sevens like to know the cause and effect. Not did, why you, not did you just said it, but why did you just see it? That's why sevens act. And so they give the impression that we're getting in their business. No, but we're just trying to get to the bottom of solution. And this particular person actually prefers to be their own best company. So they like to stay under the radar, but their lucky numbers are the seven, two, and five. And Mondays and Fridays are their best days. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are their best days, I should say. Uh, next one is January 4th, 69. Uh, this is an earth sign with an air number, very independent. It tells me they were out on their own, put Jeanette between their 19th and 22nd birthday. And I see all those five. So it tells me very smart, very engaging, very youthful. So she is an old soul in a young spirit, so to speak. This is why she will attract much younger men and older men at the same time, which has been her history. Her key numbers are the four, one, and five, oh, excuse me, the four, one, and eight, and Sunday and Monday and Saturday are her best days. I always tell you, you so fast with this, bro. You so fast with it, brother. Like you, you move like that, man. Like, I mean, man, man. Roll. That's how we roll. Me and Tommy, yeah, we gonna be joking. Okay. This this dude is cold blooded with this, y'all. This Lloyd is Lloyd ain't no joke with this. Seriously, all all kicking inside. I am the king of numerology. Woo! That's, that's confidence. <laughs> I am. I am. And it's not. It's not with arrogance. Ooh. But it took me years to know I'm the best of the best. I've been on wow. every show you can imagine, from Oprah Winfrey, you name it. No wow. one has ever said, "Brother, you don't know what you're talking about." And my book didn't rank number eight as the all best, all time best selling book for nothing, too. Okay, so I know me and Simon, we're the best. I love, I love it. I love, I love it. Um, where, where, where am I, man? Um, did that nine nine sixty four? Okay, here we have a Virgo nine person. So they're Earth sign with a fine number, which means they're very practical yet very action oriented as well. It tells me she tends to attract men in uniform. In other words, police, construction, military, handle tools, machines, and instruments, and she's a born leader. And this particular year for her is a year to fall in love, fall out of love, go back to school. And in fact, she changed her beautiful hair in late September, October. So the hair she's wearing right now was not what she wore several months ago. Bro, how the hell you tell somebody when they change their hair? Because this is what Simon and I do. Man. <laughs> Darlene, let us know when you change your hair, Darlene. Because this changed it late last year. She says, I'm going to streak it, style it, cut it, grow it. But she did something. Also, she got involved in a weight loss exercise program and went back to school, too. Hmm. Uh, ancient brother, 112, 1993. Uh, this particular person is very independent. They're earth sign with a fire number, which means they're very pragmatic, yet they're very proactive in everything they do. It does indicate they started out the gate early by either leaving home, whether it was going to school, feel they could stack out on their own. But they've got a life where they attract older persons, younger persons, and persons from different cultures. So right. that's been their dating history so far to date. 61668. Same day as Tupac. Well, this is a mm. air sign with a water number. And so they would exhibit those qualities. And see, Gemini is a literary sign and seven is a literary number. So that tells me this person is deeply inquisitive, deeply knowledgeable, may have a collection of books like I got behind me, okay? And always getting to the roots of something. They are not afraid to go down the rabbit hole and they got a mind all they own. Okay, uh, 724.86. Okay, same day as Jennifer Lopez and a couple other people. But anyway, this person's lucky numbers are the six, two, and seven. And since this is the year of the six, 2022 adds up to a six and they're born on the 24th, two plus four is six. And if you notice, they're born in 1986, which also adds up to 24. So it tells me one of their parents could have also been a Taurus or Libra or born on the 6th, the 15th, or the 24th. 
and they know the value of a dollar. In fact, they can be so stingy, they can squeeze the brown off the penny. But mm. if there's something they want, they're going to figure out how they're going to get it. Mm. March 5th, 1969. A Pisces 5, a water sign with an air number, which means very intelligent, very creative, very expressive, and very highly popular. Just don't have no patience, though. She don't like repeating herself too many times. Call it. You know, it's like, honey, we've had this conversation one time. Are you paying attention? Okay. And so she needs her space, but she should, she's multifaceted, multi-talented, multi-dimensional, and her key numbers are the five, six, and three. November 16th, 1989. Okay. Water sign with a water number, which means a deeply intuitive, deeply affectionate, strong sympathy, strong empathy for people. And this particular year is their year to fall in love, fall out of love, go back to school, get involved in some weight loss or exercise program or things of that nature, and uh, just really do something with their home and their personal life as well. Their numbers are the six, two, and seven. Excuse me, the seven, two, and six. Uh, December 27, 75. This sister is no joke. Okay. Now you can play her if you want to, but mm -hmm. you're going to get played in and fooling around with this sister. She's Ooh. an earth sign with a fine number. She's very strong willed, very determined. She knows where she's going. She knows what she's doing. She's always had a lot of ambition. At first, people tried to take advantage. And in fact, she may have been raised by a third party in her life, like a grandmother, auntie, or somebody else was equally important in her development. But the older she gets, the better she gets. And she is very independent. Her lucky numbers are the nine, eight, and six. Uh, 52986. Uh, this person, if if this is a guy, I would say women are their blessing and their curse. Mm -hmm. There are women who would love this guy if it is a male, uh, especially with I'm looking at the name Black Ghost. That sounds more like a sign to a guy's name yeah. than a woman's name. You feel what I'm saying? So this person will find that, yes, they get along well with women, but at the same time, they will have challenges with women. In fact, if he's got children, more than likely the first two, if he's got three children, he's got two girls out of the three or he works around a lot of women, or got a woman supervisor, woman director, but he would do well in the mechanical, mathematical sciences, computers, technology, engineering, and also very finicky and fussy about his eating habits and dietary laws. His key numbers are the two, seven, and five, and Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are his best days. I want to, somebody sent the cash app, uh, March 15th, 1970. This is Quad Glenn Lynn. So Quad Lynn, yeah, uh, March 15th, 1970, Lord. This person is a person that's always got taste. They've always been fair in relationships, though. Some of the people in his relationship will accuse him of having what is called control issues. But six have a very strong sense of family, a strong sense of right and wrong, and a strong sense of judge uh, justice. So mm -hmm. he runs his house like if he's got the kids because he's born in 86. When the kids get up, everybody got to straighten up their room. Everybody got to make up their beds and whatnot. And be saying, damn. But later on, when his kids have their kids and he go visit them, he'll hear his kids says, when y'all get up, y'all got to make up the beds. Y'all got to straighten up your room. That's come in. And he's always a work in progress. And more than likely in his early career, like junior high, high school, college, he may have been involved in some type of sports, athleticism, football, basketball, baseball, volleyball, golf ball. If there was a ball at the end of the world, he probably attempted to do it at one point, and he wouldn't make an excellent lawyer, doctor, or uh, realtor. Mm. Lucky numbers, by the way, are the six, three, and nine, and Fridays, Thursdays, and Tuesdays are his best days. September 22nd, 77. This is a borderline case. Nothing to do with the mental state of mind, but anybody born on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd are cusping. It means they got a foot in one sign, which is Virgo, mm and the other foot going into the sign of Libra. I would say this person is still a Virgo and their key numbers are the four, one, and five. And since 22 is considered the master number or the master builder in numerology, this is a unique person that got a way of taking things and transforming those ideas and concepts into things that are tangible, real, and touchable. Mm. Very sensitive too. And always attract odd and unusual relationships. Yo, you ever got a number where you didn't know what to say or you, you, damn, it's man's the truth, y'all. Hit up that, web. man's the truth, y'all. Do y'all see that website up there? This dude is, I, I'm, I'm just watching. I'm like, damn, yo. Uh, let's get it. Simon do this just as well as I do. Simon is no joke. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. How Simon and I 
He got it from one angle. I got it from another angle. We both get together. It's a wrap. Okay. They say. Uh, October 2nd, 2002. Look at all those twos, twos running through that person's name. Very psychic, very intuitive. Um, this collective consciousness, if it is a male, that means they will always do in the course of their life from beginning to end because they have a seven destiny. In other words, the month, the day, and the year you're born indicates what your purpose is. So therefore, symbolically, this person's in the seventh grade in the school of life, which means Cancers and Pisces will play a role. Those that are born on the 2nd, 7th, 11th, 16th, 20th, 25th, and 29th will play a role, as well as most women, whether it's a mother, grandmother, auntie, sister, daughter, girlfriend, wife, you name it. Uh, this person is also intuitive. And this person is challenged this year because they're in a nine personal year, which means they got to bring something to a close if they want to be successful. Mm. Uh, 11, 24, 86. Okay. Uh, this person is a fire sign with an earth number, which means passionate yet practical at the same time. Very good taste. And this person always knows somebody who knows somebody. And it was as interesting. This person is also born in 1986 too, which adds up to 24 if memory serves and my math is correct. Mm -hmm. So this person will live a life of luxury. They will probably end their last days with homes, uh, nice size bank account, things of that nature. And they've always got great taste. Always. They can't help themselves. Their lucky mm -hmm. numbers are the six, three, and nine, and Fridays, Thursdays, and Tuesdays are their best days. We we're gonna be here about ten. I'm gonna give y'all ten more minutes. Then y'all gotta call him for them long readings. <laughs> y'all gotta because we y'all y'all have us here all night. And this brother, this brother's red. This brother is, is sharp with it, so he's just you know. So yeah, y'all gotta hit up the brother's website and get the real reading. Y'all, I'm telling y'all when y'all get these for readings. Sign up the three monthly newsletter so they see what's going on with their zodiac sign. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's um. Nine seventeen. That's my date. I was going to say now that's very familiar. In fact, my youngest son is born on your birthday, nine seventeen. So this is an Earth sign with an Earth number. So Monica's birthday indicates that she's gotten older, has her life gotten better. I would say it starts turning around between his thirty third and thirty fifth birthday. Eight people are the late bloomers in life. Mm. But sometime by the time you they told me that, that, yeah, that thirty three, thirty five things begin to change dramatically in their favor. And in this case, uh, she is in a cycle this year where she is ready to make changes. She's in a five personal year, like you are, and five is the midway point between one and nine. And so it's like being at a fork in the road. You come off the highway, when you get off the exit, you get up to the stop sign, you got signs pointing all kinds of ways. So for you, should I go left? Should I go right? Should she go forward? But the point is she, like you, are making changes for the better, which is what you did with your family. This is also the cycle she's in, which is a cycle of opportunities, a cycle to promote yourself and brand yourself. OK, so there's some things you should think about in addition to metaverse, NFTs, as well as crypto. Um, Lloyd, do you know Dr. Sabies? Do you know his birthday? When was Dr. Sabies? Yes, November 26th. The 26th. All right, all right. All right. And in fact, when he won his case against the courts, it was in 1988, which adds up to 26 when he mm. won it. Mm. So what kind of energy Sabi had? Well, the he was a Sagittarius. It rules foreigners, foreign countries. Okay. Mm. So it also, because he's an eight, that means it's an earth number. And notice the products he got were all from the earth. earth Rodolf, yes. Stuff like that. All of his stuff was very practical. Yet as all Sagittarians, they are flamboyant. Okay. And he <laughs> did it with style. He did Indeed. it with style. Uh, he was, he was younger women too, as well as older women. Indeed. Um, 8 6 1961. Very beautiful. Lisa's birthday indicates when she ooh, was younger, ooh. she put a lot of hearts up in this piece, okay? Ooh, she is still a mess of her face. She's always a work in progress. So it's not the year she's born as so much as her attitude. So she's always about learning, growing, becoming that better woman. Uh, she's got great taste. All, in fact, all the things she buys in her closet are either classic or traditional. She don't get caught up in the fads. Blue is her lucky color from the lightest to the darkest. And her lucky numbers are the six, the two, and the seven. And Fridays and Mondays are her best days. 11, 22, 88. Okay, these are two master numbers. There's 11, there's the 22. And in my class, I have an online course, Learn From Lloyd, How to Read a Person Like a Book, that they can sign on at my website, too. That uh, this particular Ooh, that's person. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's on your website? 
Yes, oh, not only the free monthly newsletter, but when they go further down, they can sign up. I got two courses, Learn From Lloyd, How to mm -hmm. Read a Person Like a Book. That was okay. on your show. I've expanded to Learn From Lloyd, The Next Step in Numerology. That's brought me to over 3,300 students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. So in this person, this person, Brother Rakim, is a person of great vision. Uh, he has what is called in numerology, the master numbers of 11 and 22 both combined. In fact, the first African-American to go in the space, Guy Blooper, was born on this day, November 22nd. So that tells me this person has always had vision as a youngster and the ability to put those visions now as an adult into things that are very concrete and very tangible, especially now that he's about to enter his 34th birthday. Uh, he's going to do very well because... He's a late bloomer, but he always attracts odd and unusual ladies uh, and ladies that are older and ladies from different cultures, too. Mm -hmm. So that's how he does. And every now and then long distance relationship. This mm -hmm. person here is born on the same day as Jeff Bezos. Uh, he's January the 12th. And that tells me very ambitious, always want to go places, want to make something of himself. In fact, Howard Stern and Russ Limbaugh are also born on that day as well, too, January the 12th. Mm -hmm. But his lucky numbers are the three, eight and six. And Thursdays and Saturdays and Fridays are his best days. And this is his year to kickstart something new for himself. 81078. Okay, my granddaughter's birthday that I got your mother's book for. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a person that is very, very strong Will, Here's the thing. When they were younger, they attracted much older relationships. As they gotten older, the relationships have actually become younger. They, life mm -hmm. has played a reverse part for them, a reverse role for them but they know mm -hmm. what they want. They don't take orders well. They would have made an excellent doctor, lawyer, or scientist, or manager, supervisor, director. And since a winner always comes in number one, and the sign of Leo is ruled by the number one, I know what the destiny of this person is. If not, they should be miserable, mm -hmm. because they don't like taking orders. And even if they don't have a title, so you see Mr. So-and-so over there, don't mess with him. Damn. They don't know what the deal is. 10787. Elijah Muhammad's birthday, the messenger. Ooh, the messenger. Well yeah, the messengers and uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu and a couple of other famous people. In fact, this is Pushkin's birthday too in Russia. Okay, mm. I'm number seven. Mm. This particular person is very sophisticated, very laid back, very analytical, and they got this this magnetism about them that makes them very attractive. Maybe that's why they got the name Heat. Okay, <laughs> um, that, that works like that. And so, but yet they this like dude to, is serious, yo. <laughs> they like to. Stay, I'll be observing everything. But let's, let's roll. That's how. That's how we do it. This, okay? oh, this dude here. <laughs> oh man, let's so, hope. So they have a very strong personality, and they can be very sarcastic. The brothers say, "Listen." Listen, Rich, you need to take a long walk off a short bridge and keep walking. You've been trying to say, is the brother trying to say something to me? So that's how he rolls. But I know this, whatever his field, endeavor, or passions, or convictions, he's an expert in it. Nobody questions him. Nobody. His lucky numbers are the 7, 2, and 6, and Mondays and Fridays are his best days. Now, this person is an air sign with an earth number, which means they're very charming, especially if this is a lady. Very charming, got gifts. I mean, if it's a guy great physique if it's a woman a great figure the only thing about it is they've got great taste and that simply means that they can overindulge if they're not careful but they're always a work in progress either one to go to school take care of their bodies take care of their minds graduate keep in shape or things of that nature and they would do well in areas connected from business into uh real estate banking or law and in the area of entertainment make singers uh, designers, fashionistas, whatever the case is, or personal trainers, or whatever the case is, but their lucky numbers are the six, five, and six, five, and nine, and uh, Friday, Wednesday, and Tuesdays are their best days. All right, uh, 12868. Uh, this is a Gemini one person, with, I mean, excuse me, an Aquarius one person, which means they are uh, an air sign with a fire number, which means very determined, very focused. The only thing about this brother is he has to be careful who he puts his trust in. He's honest with people, but he'll find in his history everybody's not honest with him. In addition to that, whoever he seeks advice from, he needs to make sure that he's getting the best advice. So if he comes to me, he's getting the best of the best. But if he's going to a numerology, getting a numerology reading and the guy picks doorknobs all day long, it's not going to work out as well for him as it would work out if he came to me. And he should never let people push documents under his nose and say, listen, brother, just sign right here. It doesn't work like that for him. So the only thing that will keep him and parting from his money is misplaced trust, 
bad advice and legal entanglements if they're not aware or not careful. Their numbers are the one, four, and nine, and Sunday and Tuesdays are their best days. And don't worry about little man. That's why he's here. Mm -hmm. Nine, eight, eighty-one. Okay, this person is a Virgo eight person, which means they're Earth sign with an Earth number, very conservative, very focused, deep concentration. That's the one thing. When their when their mind is on something, you almost gotta snap them out of it. They they get tunnel vision. So their key numbers are the eight, six, and five, and their best days are Saturday, Friday, and Wednesday. And because they're very intense, all eight people are very intense. This explains why they'll get headaches or some concerns with the knees, teeth, or bones. If it's a woman. It'll be on her left side. If you ever have any problems with the knees, teeth, and bones, it's likely to be on your right side. Uh, uh, King Simon told me about, I used to get headaches a lot, and King Simon used to tell me about that. And, yeah, eight is number. the headache number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we know what we're talking about. Yeah, no, yeah, y'all sure do. <laughs> oh, man, yo, yo, this is, whew. Uh, 115.85. Martin Luther King's birthday and a couple other famous people of note, but this particular person indicates that they struck out on their own at an early age. Uh, they also are very, very focused. They like to, they got great people skills, great personal skills. They are the kind of people that try to be persons of their word. They're very tenacious. They can be very stubborn if you cross them on a bad day and almost everything they pick in the store never matches what's in their pocketbook initially. But their lucky numbers are the six, eight, and three, Fridays, Saturdays, and Thursdays are always their best days. Mm -hmm. You know Deborah Cox? Uh, ain't, ain't that a saying that somebody said Deborah Cox would like you to call? Do you know Deborah Cox? I do know Deborah Cox. I'm wondering if that's the same one. I know so many celebrities, brother. It's like, yeah. I do. I do. I really do. Yeah. Well, shout out to uh, Deborah Cox. Uh, let's get hey, Deborah, to that. I'll give you a call. Yeah. 6-8-1976. Uh, 1976. Okay. This person is an air sign with an earth number, which means logical and pragmatic at the same time. This person is a person that's got a great taste in terms of the material world. This person, if they had their way about it, they'd rather live in a home than rather than in a high rise in an apartment building or a condo. This person is also the kind of person that's very focused. You know, it's interesting, uh, Brother Rich, eight people born on the 8th, the 17th, or the 26th are initially misunderstood as being cold, distant, aloof or lacking in feelings and affections. The irony is eight people are the warmest, loyalist, most dependable person you can depend on. Mm. It's like, so I tell eight people, nice. if you had to hang a model over your door, it would be to know me, is to love me. Mm. But once I get mm. to know you, the nicest guy. But by impressions, people might think you're standoffish or aloof or don't give two hooty wops. Mm. But that's not the case, brother. Just the opposite once they get to know you. Their lucky numbers are the eight, five, and six, and their best days are Saturday, Wednesday, and Friday. Can't tell you how spot on you are about things you're saying about my numbers, man. Totally spot on. This brother's incredible. We're going to take five more, and then we're getting out of here, family. So just five more. If you didn't get a reading, I apologize. You could uh, contact the brother in here, look out for you, and maybe give you, I don't know, do something. But family, I'll got, work out some. Just say you heard me on Brother Rich's show, and I'll work yeah. out some kind of discount for them. In, indeed. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you see how he looks out, family? The brother's looking out. You know, so uh, let's get to Miss Boyd, 921.73. Miss Boyd started out old and ended up young. So don't let the year of her birth fool you. She mm. doesn't look her age. In mm. fact, she might look like she's born in 1986 and can say that, and ain't nobody going to say you lying. Mm. Okay? She needs to learn a second language because she gets along with foreigners, foreign countries, and do well with foreign languages. And if she's ever traveled outside of the United States, she's never had a problem with the local. She's the kind of person that grew up mature very, very early, and yet she prides herself in being a person of a word. So if she says something, Miss Boyd says something, that's like taking money to the bank. So probably in those times, we all have those times where we're struggling, but mm -hmm. yet if Miss Boyd said it, they say, oh, Miss Boyd said it, she's good for it, let her go. And she, she does that too. This particular year, she's closing the books on some situations which she started late last year. She woke up and said, you know what? I don't need this. I don't need that. And somebody been straddling up and she says, you know what? I don't need you guys either. So she's been cleaning house because some brand new things are beginning to open up for her beginning in late September, right after her birthday, going into 2023. That's going to change her life to propel her to new beginnings, new directions, new opportunities. But in the meantime, there her key numbers are the three, six and nine. And her best days are always on Thursday, Fridays and Tuesdays. 
Oh, by the way, family, shout out to the brother Black Dot and Malcolm for the gear. Y'all could go to Urban X. Um, I think it's Urban X NYC. But if you just type in Urban X, it's a couple of websites that come on, you'll find it. But the brother got the Ashe shirts. So the brother got oh, the Ashe shirts. I like that. Yeah, I Did saw you see that. it, right? The Ashe shirts. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the brother that. got the, the fittings. You know, the brother got some great merch on his website. So shout out once again to the brother uh Black Dot. Let's get to the next one. Um 42588. Okay, that's Rita Franklin's birthday. Okay. Mm. Uh Miss Detroit. Uh, this person is very, very independent. They've got a mind of their own. They can be very sarcastic, but whatever they feel, craft, love, passions, endeavors, or career or job is, they know it inside and out. And don't nobody says, Are you sure? That's how they roll. They've always got a mind of their own. And the fact that they're coming under the sign of Taurus, which only adds to their tenaciousness, means that when they are set in what they're doing, nobody questions them. Their key or lucky numbers are the seven, two, and six. By the mm -hmm. way, they like to sleep with no clothes on, too, which is none mm -hmm. of my business. I got a brother. I didn't even know y'all was hitting me up on Cash App, too. Um, I got a brother or uh older brother, 927-1948. 927 this yeah. is a person that's the same day as Don Cornelius from uh, Soul Train. Mm -hmm. uh, but this brother has always been a person that has been very magnetic or mag magnetic in the sense of he's always attracted people. He's probably traveled, traveled extensively at some point or the world has come past his doorstep and he succeeds as a result of his productive intellect. He's always had a good opinion, more than likely he may have had some military experience or dealt with law enforcement, construction, uh, careers, security, something of that nature, but he does not like being controlled by anybody and he lets the chips fall where it may. And he doesn't allow anybody to talk to him any kind of way, especially with the year. The mm -hmm. year he's born, you know, people would kind of talk to us any kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know, never give off that energy. You don't bring that crap over this way. You may take it over to somebody else, but you don't bring it to me. So he's mm -hmm. always had a good opinion of himself and he's always been a fighter. And he's always been determined to be the master of his faith or the captain of his ship. And his numbers are the nine, six, and three. And Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are his best days. All right. Six, uh, ten, eighty-six. This is a very important birthday to me because my hero, Marcus Messiah Garvey, died on this day in England. Mm -hmm. And my one of my other heroes, Jack Johnson, the first heavyweight champion, black heavyweight champion of the world, also died in on this day in the South in an automobile accident. This is also the first day of Hattie McDaniels to the first African-American to get the Academy Award, but yet they didn't honor her at the Academy Awards, go figure, okay? But this mm. person here is very independent. Amanda thought she would get married at a very early age or wanted to at a very uh, early age, but she is very fierce, she's very determined, she's very focused, she doesn't like being dictated to by other people and, mm -hmm. you know, it's very interesting when you're honest now, Brother Rich, people think you're mean. So the mm -hmm. one thing is you don't want to hear the truth from Amanda. You shouldn't go talk to her. Amanda, what do you think? And they'll say, well, honey, you should have did better. She'll say, Lloyd, that was the dumbest ass thing you did. You know, <laughs> and then she'll say, but come here, honey, let me, you know, but that's how she show her love. But she mm -hmm. is a born leader, that I can tell you. And so she either needs to own her business or be a manager, supervisor, director, or being dictated to. That's the wrong person. I wouldn't mm. say it. No. All right. 216.97. Okay. Born on my birthday. This particular person is the, uh, he's a uh, air sign with a water number, which means very analytical, very independent, worries a little bit more than he needs to. But when he gets past that point of worry, it's no big deal. This particular year is good for him to start a business, go back to school get involved in a serious weight loss or exercise program, all depending on how his health has been, and definitely some relationships will be coming his way. So if he entered the year in door number one where he didn't have nobody, all that will change. If he ended the year with somebody and it's been halfway decent, that's going to move up. But if he entered door number three with somebody that's been working his nerves, by summertime, it's going to be a wrap. His numbers are the seven, two, four, and one. This is the only person that's got four numbers out of all the persons I've read today. And Mondays, mm. and Sundays, and Wednesdays are his best days. Wow. Uh, let's get to, we got, we got two more. Um, three, four, 78. Uh, this is a Pisces four person. So that tells me they came up very, very much influenced by third party people. 
This is a person that had to work their butt off, but this is a very significant year for them because not only are they born on the fourth, but when I took the month, the day, the year, the, when I took the month and day they were born and added it to the year 2022, he's in a, or she or whoever light evolving Hotep, I would again would say Hotep, he is in a four personal year. So that means this year he's laying the foundation, he's laying the cornerstone, he's building some kind of structural organization for himself. And in fact, this month of April that we're about midway through should be his year of achievement, something dealing with his past, something dealing with money, property, making major moves, legal matters. And next month it indicates that he's gonna be closing the books, making his dreams come true, and maybe embarking on a long distance trip, all depending on his present situation. Female, her. Okay. Uh, and last one, February 1st, 1957. King Simon's birthday. I think it's a great way to end it. <laughs> mm -hmm. This person is an air sign with a fire number, and these are elements that are. And then when I look at Renee's name, she's got all those fives in her name. And the name Renee adds up to 22, which is a master number that governs the sign of Aquarius, then Leo, then Gemini. So that means one of her parents could have been born under those signs or born on a date like the first, the fourth the 10th, the 13th, 19th, the 22nd, 28th, or 31st of the month. But this is a very headstrong woman that's always let the cards fall where they may. My mother used to have this song she loved called Tell It Like It Is. Well, that's Re Renee Laverne. That's how she rolls. I, I forget. I want to squeeze two more real quick, King Summon. I don't want to forget these okay, two. Okay, her number 12, is 12587. Uh, 12587. Yeah. Uh, this is the same day as Walt Disney and a couple other famous people. Uh, they've always been very popular. They've always been very well liked, but sometimes they got problems with their nervous system or emotional upsets or things like that. They have to be careful of. They also have to guard their hands, their arms, their shoulders, nervous system, mental irritability, and mm. stuff of that nature. But their lucky numbers are the five, six, and three. And Wednesday, Friday, and Thursdays are their best days. And uh, last one, 31st of August, 1970. Okay. This is a woman actually ahead of her time, Shabazz. She likes to think outside the box, which is why she can't tell everybody what her plans are. They will hear what she's saying, but they don't get what she's saying until later on. So because of that, she has to understand that she cannot share her visions and what she wants with people initially because they will give her resistance. But then later on, they said, girl, I remember you said that months ago. Or her girlfriend will say, well, you know, she'll look at her hairstyle and her girlfriend will say, yeah, you've been there, done that. So she's kind of there. But yes, she's very sensitive, very, very different and unique, and born the same day as uh, uh, Rollins, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, whatever that thing was. But anyway, uh, anyway, Lisa said, this is so dope. Yes, I agree with you. I love this. And they should go to my course. They should go to my website, lloyd-strayhorn.com, to sign up for the free monthly newsletter. They should go to Lloyd-Strayhorn.com to also sign up for the class. The class, there are two classes they can choose from. You go at your own pace. You get a certification. You finish the course. And my cash app is numbersinyou.com, named after my book. That's my orange book there. Those are my four books that they can get on Amazon. And please get Simon's books, too, on Amazon. And, uh, Brother Rich, you about time to have a book out yourself, buddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, you know what? You know what I want. I want to ask you. You talked about the nervous system. It, what, what's the connection? I thought you told me something before about the Virgo or the number eight in well, the nervous speak, system. Yes, because you're ruled by the planet Mercury, and Mercury rules the nerves, mental mm -hmm. irritability, nervous tension, uh, uh, mental exhaustion, and things like that. In fact, one of the best signs for you is if you're under stress, you'll get some twitching around the mouth or the eye. That's Mother Nature saying, "Slow it down a bit." Mm. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so if you ever experienced a little twitching about the face, that's saying you need to hit the brakes and chill a bit. I would say the eye. I would get that sometimes around yeah, the eye. That's why I say yeah. either the mouth or the eyes. Those are normally the two areas. Isn't it I amazing? I don't know how you know this shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he knows all of this, man. This dude here, study. man. Years of study. And anybody who is passionate about whatever it is they're interested in will express themselves in that way too, which is fascinating. That's why I'm always so appreciative of meeting other people with great talents like King Simon and I have. Uh, somebody asked me, what's the number to receive text messages? Right here, 646-760-7806. That's the number to receive updates or notifications from me personally, because YouTube doesn't always send them out. 
So text text the, the name Rich. Text Rich to 646-760-7806 family, right? And I'll notify you whenever I'm about to go live. Anything I else you can get? Yeah, yeah. I want to say, Rich, you bring to your platform a whole wide range of interesting topics. And I pray that people have the presence of mind to understand and appreciate what you got to do with your family. So when I hear a little man upstairs, that's mm -hmm. a good sign for me, being yeah. a father of children, okay? Yeah. That's always a good sign. That's their, their time. But for you to do what you do, and you, you know, you always supporting people like myself. I know I knew you you took my my online course and took it to a whole nother level. So please support uh Brother Rich at Black Magic, dollar sign Black Magic 363. Please support him. Please do that for his family. He's got the cutest little kid, man. Y'all, if y'all don't do it for him or his wife, do it for the child. Okay. Please do it. Don't be stingy. Show up. Hey, 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 Lloyd, it's always fun. So fun when you come on the show, my brother. I got to get you on here more often, definitely. Uh, I'm going to call you. I, I want to, I got to talk to you about something. So I'm going to call you, if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Whenever, I'll be, and if not, yeah. I'll call you back because your schedule is as busy as mine. But thank you for allowing me to come onto this platform. Thanks, King Simon, for supporting, but run those things. If he didn't, I wouldn't have said nothing. I'm so busy <laughs> just being of service. But thank you very, very much. I'm very honored, Rich. And much love to you and your family, too, buddy. Thank you, my brother. Thanks for everybody who tuned in, showed love, appreciation, and just enjoyed the show. We had a real good time tonight. I hope everybody was able to learn and benefit from tonight's platform. We are regaining the knowledge of who we are, family. We are regaining it. So I do yeah. have one last question. Yes, yes. I'm not. It's not the section of where you live. What's your house number where you now live? What's the house number? The building number? Yeah, where you now live presently. I got. I ain't gonna say it. I'm. I'll tell you. No, I'll I didn't want the exact address. Just the the number. What oh, was, seven, seven nine two. Seven ninety two. Yeah. That adds up to eighteen, which is a nine. That's all. You have a nine address. That's all. I'll explain later when we talk. Uh, I think King Simon told me that before. What, what does that mean? Tell me. What does that mean? Well, nine is fire. So I've made. That's sure what he told me. That's what he told me. You in the home. I'd make sure that Yo, you my smoke detector went off yesterday when I was interviewing um Rod Hayes because nine Yo. governs fire. You Yo, should never I got a big problem. This smoke detect. I'm sorry, I gotta cut. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, my smoke detector is so sensitive, bro. I could be, I could just have some some toast, some French toast on this, and it, it'll go off. Yo, it goes off for anything. And if you bro, live crazy. in a house, also get a carbon monoxide detector and put it because normally the the furnaces are down in the basement area, so you mm -hmm. keep it right there uh, up the top. So a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector, that's all I would advise. And no leaving of candles on and all that other stuff. Yo, y'all know I'm not BSing. Who was who was live with me yesterday when I was on with Rod Hayes and the smoke detector went off? Who was here? <laughs> so they know. Y'all see how that happened yesterday. And then the next day, this brother says, oh, your building is ruled by fire. Smoke mm -hmm. detector. Yo, you cannot make this shit up. Who was here yeah. yesterday? So for me, I, if you, I, if you I, had to I, put insurance, I put more fire insurance on that property than water insurance. Feel me? If right, the yeah. property added up to a number two, which is water, I'd put more water insurance on it rather than fire. Yeah. Because each number rules an element in nature. Yeah, T. Harris, you was here. You see, you know I ain't bullshitting T. Harris yesterday. It went off. Rod was like, what the? <laughs> so, yeah, man, I mean, I went here. So the, the people that were here yesterday, they, they know I'm not lying. I just want you to no, they know. Said like, I witness. They, they just said yeah. I witnessed. Yeah, they bear witness. Like, it's this is mind-blowing, y'all. On one day, the, it, then the next day, the brother says, oh, yeah, fire, smoke. Like, this is mind-blowing, y'all. Make you sure see, you're I mean, and I read houses like we read people because the numbers don't change. It's where you find the numbers. Tell me, tell, tell me about 985, uh, uh, like a home number Nine, 985. Eight, 985, that adds to 224. So that tells me that's a very odd and unusual structure. In other words, if you look at the property on the left and right side of it, there's something about 985 that makes it different, taller, wider, shorter. You go in one way, you come out another way. Yo, time. this dude is I, I'm not going to say why that's accurate, but when we get off the phone, <laughs> yo, bro. <laughs> yo, wait till, yo, now wait till, you see why I'm the king of numerology. Yo, numerology. wait till my girl heard you just say that. Yo, bro, yo, how the fuck, how the fuck you know this? <laughs> so 
That's what we do. That's what you said. Out and yo, bro, dude, yo, this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So it's. I, I was just saying, it's not a curiosity since the relocation, but God bless you, man. Thank you, and I didn't mean to go over time, but you. I I rarely get a chance to be with you, so when I do, I take. No, yeah, we having a good time. Yeah, no, we 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 just having a good time. I really appreciate it, my brother. One more time, leave that wet because I need them to crash that website. Leave that because you the bad. You, you bad. Lloyd. You a bad man. You a bad man. Strayhorn.com. That's L L O Y D dash Strayhorn. S T R A Y H O R N. Please go to my website right there and sign up for the free monthly newsletter. We will not sell your email to anybody. If I got something going on, I'm going to be on Brother Richard's show. You might know that. But other than that, we don't sell it. And also go further down and sign up for the online course. How to read a person like a book, and also the next step in numerology. But the pre word is learn from Lloyd. The next step in numerology, learn from Lloyd. How to read a person like a book, and it all started on your show, brother. Thank you. You a bad Thank man. You. Thank you. you. Thank you. You are a bad man. You a bad. I, I I was convinced before, but now you's a bad man. <laughs> okay. Family, we out of here. This is a bad man right Thank here. You, man. Take care. <laughs> And Peace, family. Thank, Thank you, man. Thanks, King Simon. That's my brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in, family. See y'all tomorrow. Peace.